completely without anything else, without reading our questions first, just so we can get a sense for the feeling of the poem first. And then we'll start getting into the questions and thinking through this on an analytical level. Okay? Ty, could you read my room for us, please? Oh, my heaven, my blog of peace in my um, hectic. Hectic world. There you go. <laughs> the whole thing time. Hey, why? <laughs> <laughs> it says, um, my room, my personal disaster area of piles, quality, and water. Music and comfortable chaos. Woo. Chaos, my room, my um, I know. Harbor. I know, I know. I don't know. My harbor fantasies. D with Ace. What kind of room is this at age six? Hey, something I can't read. Right Detectives? Now. You're doing a great job. <coughs> Detectives. Psychic. Hey. Are you okay here? Yes, I'm being here. I can't read something. You're doing a great job, Ty. No more excuses, let's go. I don't know how to fly, but I like it in my room. My ongoing. Do you want to get some more versions this time? That's not fun. Good job. Good job. So now that we've read through the poem, let's go ahead and look at our questions. Okay? Let's look at our questions. Number one. Could I have Romero read number one for us, please? Okay, so now let's look at our poem. 
We have the stanzas or the paragraphs of poetry. Every time that there's a line break and it's a separate one, okay, we are going to look at them. Are they all the same amount of lines? Are they all the same amount of lines? Nope. No. Which one is different? All of them. All of them. They all have different kind of lines. All different stanzas. They all have different lengths <coughs> of lines. Yeah. But let's count how many lines we have. Seventeen. In the first stanza, how many lines Four. are there? Four. Four. In the second stanza, Kyle, how many lines are there? Four. Four. Three. There's four. In the third stanza, Howard. In the third stanza, how many lines are there? Four. So we have a pattern. We have a pattern here. How many lines are there in most of the stanzas? Four. Four. Except for the last one. Except for the last one. Great catch. Okay, count up the lines there in that last one. Ten. There's ten lines in that final stanza. Okay, so do you think that the author just was like, hmm, I think I'll make the last stanza ten lines. Do you think he just randomly decided to do that? No, the dog just made it. He wanted to go probably more bucky boots on the stanza. So we all want to make sure we just heard what Courtney said. He just said something really important. He said the author probably wanted to put more into that last stanza, to put more ideas there. So do we think that maybe this last stanza could be really important? Potentially more important than all the others? Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's look at that stanza alone. Okay, let's look at that stanza alone. Jason, will you read that last stanza, please? Okay, so we have a whole bunch of mys packed in there. Okay, we have a whole bunch of mys. Okay, so the author is saying my room. Okay, that's the very important line. Okay, so what is he talking about with all the other mys? Thomas, what do you think he's talking about with all the other mys if the very first one says my room? What is he describing? So what do you think he's talking about there, Logan? He's talking about his room. So all the other mys are going to be describing that room. That space. So look at all those description, those descriptive words there. My haven, my organized chaos. Okay, are all of those negative? Are all of those positive, or is it a little bit of both? A little bit of both. It's a little bit of both. Okay. So he has he has some pretty positive feelings about this place and negative. Some negatives. Why would he call a room his room his prison? Why would he have to stay in there? Because he's grounded. He got in trouble and they said, and his parents said, go to your room. So suddenly it's his prison. But do you think he fully minds being in that room? No. No. It's also his haven. Because when he's trapped in there, do you think the uh, parents will come up there and sit there with him the whole time? No. No, get to chill out there. Okay, think about what he's done. Right, Kyle? He's thinking about what he's done. Okay, and thinking about what else is in his room. Maybe he has a book that he can read. Lots of peace. 
Lots of peace. Peace. Tranquility. Okay? A place to go away from everything else. Okay? So, with this in mind, I'm going to get out our sticks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw our sticks to put us into groups. Okay? So that we can answer our questions together. Our first group is going to come next to Thomas over here, Austin. Go ahead and come back here with Thomas. Let's go. Next, the person who's going to come back here with Kyle is Jason. Let's move now. Move. Let's go. Come on, Jason. Move next here, please. Kyle and Jason. Okay. Our next groups, we're going to have Reese and Kayla. We're going to have Ty and Courtney. We're going to have Erica and Alicia. We're going to have Kayla and Kara. Roger and Logan. We're going to have uh, Tara join with Kayla and Kara. Okay. And uh, Howard and Roger, Logan and Shane. We are now going to go through these questions with our partners. Please raise your hand if you have questions. When we're all finished, we will raise our hands and I will come by to check for mastery for our skill that we discussed yesterday, but remember is up here for us to see. Our overall skill, the big goal for this lesson is to be able to identify literary devices, okay? And our objective is to understand similes and metaphors. So I'm gonna come around, look at these questions with you, discuss this objective with the poem, and then we will check for mastery when we're all done. So go ahead and work with your partners, please. Yeah, I know you do. Yeah, I know you do. 